Let's talk about the most hyped, misunderstood, and honestly misused concept in endurance training right now, zone two training. You've probably heard it a thousand times, just do more zone two, and you'll magically transform your performance. There's some truth there, but also a lot of nonsense. If you're an age group triathlete, juggling a job, family, and chasing a 70.3 or Ironman PB, you don't have time to waste. You need to know when zone two is gold and when it's just garbage volume. I've been there myself as an athlete. Today, I'll break down the actual physiology behind zone two, the mistake 90% of athletes make, how to use it properly, and when to switch gears. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly when to pull back, when to lean on it, and when to move beyond it. Let's go. Here we go, let's dive into it. What is zone two? Now, six or eight months ago, I did a cycling video on zone two, and I broke it down into some practical telltale signs. For example, when you think you're in zone two because of your ability to hold the conversation, for example, or chat on the phone when you're on the bike. That's a little bit more practical and quite vague. So today I'm gonna to chat about what is zone two, how to integrate it properly, and also when zone two fails you. Okay, and it's a perfect time of the year to improve this. Straight up, it's aerobic durability. So durability is widely researched at the moment in cyclists and runners. If we can improve our durability over long distance, the tour riders, very good ultra runners, our aerobic efficiency is much better. And the drop off later in a race, six, eight, 10 hours is way low and your, your performance improves. So your thresholds don't change. So it's aerobic durability. It's the moderate intensity factor where your body uses mostly fat as fuel. Mostly, you're never quite using one or the other. Just so you know, there's always an element of aerobic or anaerobic in a certain exercise prescription, but mostly fat for fuel and you're below your first lactate threshold. So everyone agrees, agrees with that. LT1, VT1 in, in terms of um, physiology terms. Okay, so that's why elite athletes, pro cyclists, uh, runners, Ironman pro spends a huge chunk of their time in zone two. It works, but let's just go back here. Why does it work? It improves your capillary density, your oxygen delivery to the muscles. It enhances your ability to spare glycogen and rely on fat for longer, strengthens your heart and overall CV system. Okay, so that's ultimately what you're trying to do in endurance event is have a very good aerobic durability, aerobic engine. Anaerobic is a 10 second sprint and generally speaking, a 100 meter runner. For everything else, we are aerobic. Now there's different distances and there's different durations, of course. We, for the purpose of this video, is talk, we're talking about 70.3 in Ironman and how to utilize zone two and when should we use it and when should we move on? Okay, there's different zone models. Some people use maximum heart rate up. For this purpose of this, I'm gonna use threshold heart rate, 75 to 85% of your threshold or around 72 to 83% of your pace, your threshold pace. Build mitochondrial density, that's our energy currency, mitochondria. Of course, you improve your fat oxidization. You can manipulate that by doing fasted rides as a male, fasted runs. You develop your aerobic base year upon year. The Norwegians have taken 10, 12 years to get to where they have just won a clean sweep in the world Ironman champs. So if we can make your engine more efficient, remember it's a word that we don't use, you can get fit. You need to be efficient. So basically you use hardly any petrol to go from here to Scott. Okay, that's the goal. It's the foundation for long distance events like Ironman, 70.3 ultras and adventure races. Obviously, if you're a cyclist listening to this as well, of course, you've heard this zone too and you've heard very good interviews. Dr. P Peter Tier, please Google him. If you haven't listened to some of his um, medical podcasts and and longevity, he's interviewed um, Tour de France winners. Pajikar, he, he, you know, his zone two is like 320, 330 watts. He's just happy days sitting there. Triathletes are about 100 watts less than that. But there's a reason why they do a lot of their work there, but they can do 25 to 35 hours a week. Okay, and remember that point because it comes up in a couple of little slides. I'm using my little magic whiteboard here, which is interactive, my new little way of delivering my my videos too. I hope you enjoy it and thanks for tuning in so far. I really appreciate it. So when does it fail you? Now I don't have all the answers and I've certainly made mistakes and I have fallen into a couple of these cat categories. So um, I'll tell you when as an athlete and of course I've utilized it a lot of the years and 
definitely improves because you can see your heart rate drop for the same power, the same pace. And we know that once that's better, your efficiency and your durability is better. If you only do zone two, which a lot of us just go out and exercise, and I'm talking about the general exerciser, you, you'll just build a very good diesel engine. You speak to, you hear your friends say, I can go all day. Just don't have that extra gear. And that's because you probably have spent so much time over the years just doing zone two work. You've never truly gone very hard into that severe domain intensity. So above your second turn point. Okay, you need it for climbs, surges, and of course, performance. All right. If you only spend that time, then you're only going to be good at that, at that sort of one trick pony. Where it fails, I don't know if fails is the right word, where there's a bit of a gray area. You can't rack up 25 hour weeks like professionals and recover like a professional. That's the key thing. What happens is you never touch the high intensities to raise your ceiling. Now, this is where I know I did parts of it, but I should do it all year round as an athlete. Now, it might only mean 20, 30 seconds or building up to three minute efforts when you super fit. You work in combination and I'll, t I'll, I'll chat about that in a bit. The other areas where you're using as excuse to sort of avoid those harder sessions, you are oh, you're not quite feeling right, your HRV was down or you didn't sleep that well or bottom line, a lot of the time you just dehydrated, a little bit of sugar lows and you just want an easy ride or an easy run because let's face it, we do enjoy the easier stuff in training. Also why it fails, it's why triathletes feel strong at hour two in the marathon in Ironman. I don't know if that's a bit potentially why your issues are arise, could just be fueling, but then they completely low up in the final hour or two of the back end of a of a long bike or a marathon, of course. Same with a half half Ironman. Okay, so your zone two is not efficient. Basically, it's cost you too much currency to go at 80% of your FTP or 75% if you are doing an Ironman. Okay, you just don't have that strong enough uh, foundation. That's again economical, but more is not better. If you lack that key specificity, the intensity, the periodization of intensity, and then your your progression, okay? You can't just spend three, four months doing completely just zone two work. There's plenty of people that do that and with very good results. They might vary quite a lot of the terrain. They might vary their uh, cadence that, that they do indoor work, cadence drills. Um, zone two has a big band, not like thresholds, really tightly regulated by a few percent. So you could do hours and hours at the lowest end of zone two with less stress. So running does a lot of that to improve your economy and your durability and your uh, fat oxidization. If you try ride around at the top end of zone two, now some, some pros that's 240 watts, 260 watts at the top of zone two. It's quite degrading. There's different ways to slice it, but most age group triathletes struggle with that. Okay, so that's what is zone two? When does it fail you? I know I've fallen into the junk miles category before, not with coaching or myself. I've avoided probably the the high intensity work and just because I prefer to do some of the easier work and I know my, my weakness and strength. That's just from testing and, and years in sport. How to integrate it correctly, in my opinion, using a little bit of science as well. Okay, so let's start here. Now, you need to do some threshold and VO2 work. These might be big terminologies. Um, you can spend a bit of time on that, reading about it. You can ship, shift your lactate thresholds upwards. Then the zone two work has its place completely. Okay, you need to also do your strength work to handle fatigue late in the races. And of course, injury prevention, I, I talk about. So you need that in combination, okay? So for example, you can build your base and your foundation with the zone two, you, you need to get fit, but you always need a plan. And in the early season, the big aerobic box, you probably want to be 70 to 80% of your volume in zone two. Now that's biking, running, swimming, okay? So you can see there's a so sort of a 20, 25% area where you could do some of that high intensity work, which is this that I'm talking about. Now you might not start straight away with the VO2 work. So VO2 is, you know, three to five minutes of above threshold duration. You might start at three to five minutes at threshold and then for three, four weeks later, work into one minute of VO2s, building up to three to five minutes. And then if you can manage five minutes, eight minutes is the, is the high end for very well-trained um, athletes. Okay, so this is quite key here. Most of us, I've done Ironmans on that. If you're training eight to 12 hours, which most age groupers can fit in 
eight hours on a, on, on a push on a busy week. You don't really have space for that junk volume, but you know zone two is important. And this is where I think I've certainly learned from my age groupers and also learned over the years how to implement this better. And you've got to count every hour because it's, it's crucial. So how might a typical week look like? Two to three zone two key sessions. So that's bike and run, all right? So now I'm not giving you duration because that's based on, you know, with zone two, volume is key, like actual hours. But if you do one to two high intensity exercises, threshold, tempo is technically still aerobic, but you need a caveat to lead into the threshold and the VO2 short intervals is your goal. So it might just be 30 15s, 40 20s, anything up to a minute is classed as a short interval, anaerobic above threshold. Your swim can be technique focused and aerobic work. I just spoke about that in a recent video on off season work, which is a great time of the year. Right now listening to this video as it comes out September, October. And then of course, in a perfect world, two strength sessions, but one to two as an average. That'll just be a beautiful, nice, complete triathlete, not just focusing on pure zone two and not just killing yourself with high intensity. Some of us love high intensity. Some of us are just more of a, let's get the consistency going right. And you actually can't fail with sprinkling a bit of intensity when you feel good. A lot of zone two work and strength sessions. When your HRV is trending down over a period of two to three weeks, even as short as a week, that's when you pull back from intensity and start doing a lot more zone two. Okay, so heart rate guided value training. The zone two will push it up, stimulates the parasympathetic. It obviously helps you actively recover. So you see it has its place. Now that's all year round, okay? All year round. You'll just do less generalized zone two in the race specific season. You'll do more specificity around race pace or upper zone two for Ironman. Do you see where I'm going? So. I feel that that is a really nice flow chart of what zone two is, where it fails, and how to integrate it properly. Now, you might have some questions around some of those things, and you might not agree with some of the things, but I think that's the fundamental basics you need to get right for any distance you're doing, half Olympic or Ironman, and tailor it to your specificity. Zone two isn't just about data or heart rate. And if you're serious about taking your training from guessing to executing, click the link below and apply for coaching. You need to know when to go easy, but also brave enough to push when it matters. That's the key. Holding back and pushing athletes is one of our most time consuming aspects of coaching, but so rewarding. I also made another video talking about recovery as a triathlete. Check it out and I'll see you out there.